Well, you guys, my peepity peeps, um, Heidi Ho, and welcome to the new year. It is, no, uh, it's November. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's January 2nd, and I thought I'd give you a little, a little 360 peekity peek at what the store looks like today. Many, many piles of things left yet to, to take care of. Now, partially that's because I have no lighting. Grant is off getting my lighting solutions for those fans that don't work. And I brought brought lots and lots of things that are being used and going to be put away. Um, also, the lighting that goes up above the ceiling lighting, he's going to be working on that today as well. So it is quite dim in here. Um, but I wanted to show you something. Okay. Done. Finish the curtains for the entire room. Uh, minus the top treatment. And I wanted to show you what this uh, curtain in the front looks like. I think it turned out beautifully. Let's see if I can do this without tripping. Okay. So looky look. Isn't that pretty? Um, I just love the way this turned out. Of course, I love the way the whole dang thing turned out. That's what it looks like when it's, you know, more or less closed. Um, but I thought I would take you outside and show you what they look like from, uh, you know, from the street, from the outside of the building. So you can see how that lining um, functions. Um, I hope everybody's having a great uh, first week of the year and everyone's feeling strong and as all, as if all things are possible that's what i'm trying to feel like today oh, i got traffic on my street okay so anyhow here's what the curtains look like from outside and i really think it's adorable although although this uh building uh, this room is just being uh used for crafts and sewing and so forth, eventually that's going to be the tea room. And when that happens, those curtains will really come in handy. So let's get out over here, take a look. So there we've got open curtains and this is what they look like closed. Now, I have a couple things left to do to really make them perfect. I need to put a hook in this final curtain ring and that hook needs to attach to the wall so that you don't get a gap when the curtains are closed. They stay um, attached at each end. Another thing I need to do, I need to put the curtain um, weights in. They look like little flat magnets and you put them in down at the bottom of your curtain so that they hang nicely. I haven't done that yet as well, but um, so there we go. I think it turned out really, really cute. While I'm out here, look, I have a window that won't close. I think we're going to need to actually take that out and fix it and put it back in. It won't, the guys can't get it to roll, roll closed. Um, and there are my bathrooms. Uh, so anyhow, Nick's going to come and pick up a lot of this mess. We're going to make a big, huge pile with all the garbage. And in this little room here, oh, there's all sorts of neat stuff. That's heritage junk that came from the, uh, yeah, that came from the original when it was a bar. And there's old bar stools and all kinds of neat stuff inside that little metal shed. So, yeah. Boy, I tell you, my my oak tree's not looking too swell. I need to have somebody remove the mistletoe out of it. That may have to come down. So, people use this parking lot. They they come in over there and they sweep along here, and then they go out on the road here, almost like it's a you know. A shortcut and that irritates me so hi so what I'm going to do right here in this spot 
I am going to park Grant's big, huge 1964 international flatbed truck. <laughs> so you can't be running through there anymore with your cars, people. Anyhow, um, <laughs> I'm going to paint it some crazy color and I'm going to paint the sign. I'm going to paint the sign on it as well. So, um, so it'll be, a, I'll use it as advertising as well as a barrier for this section right here. Because that's just, it's dangerous, number one, and it'll keep people from coming up on my property, number two. Um, you know, it's too bad we don't live in a world where I could be cool with that, but we don't. If someone parks on my property, uh, I'm responsible. So that puts my insurance in jeopardy and all of that. So, you know, I'm a really nice person until it comes to business. And then I'm kind of all by the book. But the book has saved me more than once when it comes to business. So I'm going to continue doing that. Flip this around so I can see you. Oh boy. We have some changes coming up in our life, lives. Um, Grant worked for a guy for years, years and years and years. Um, took care of all of his solar, all of his electrical, uh, ran the big case tractor up and down the road to make sure that they were, they could get in and out when it got sloppy. Um, pretty much took care of all the technical stuff that this guy couldn't handle and he didn't want to pay uh, professionals for. And it worked out great. Um, the guy's quite elderly now and um, and so he happened again. <laughs> it was Grant he calling both times. And he may call again before I get through this video. Anyhow, so um, so like I said, Grant has stuff. Grant has as much stuff as I do, maybe more. And it's been sitting on a corner of this guy's 20 acres for years. Um, uh, here's, just a, here's just a short list. Um, he has a 40 foot container like mine. He has the big um, flatbed international truck. He has a burnt out fifth wheel. He has a big old class A motorhome. Um, he has four or five or six different vehicles, uh, an old Lincoln, an old Blazer, an old snowmobile, I think an old Oldsmobile of some kind. He just, it's a lot of Detroit steel sitting around on this five acres. And in addition to all that, he has things, things like tons and tons of hand tools just stacked up lots and lots of oh i think he's got washing machines and dryers um he has two huge i mean i don't know how many gallons of activated charcoal he has in these two big plastic drums but they're not really drums they're bigger than drums i guess they're maybe 200 gallons something like that um full of activated charcoal, unused activated charcoal. Um, let's see what else does he have? Uh, oh, he has something super cool. It's a an old wood cook stove that's in pieces and sitting underneath the motorhome. Um, bicycle parts, just, just stuff as far as the eye can see. Five acres worth of stuff. Now, he's not bringing it home. Well, he's not bringing most of it home. I told him I want to I wanna, to, uh, have first right of refusal on anything like antique tools, anything, anything like that, that I, I feel I has value, right? <laughs> and then the rest of it's going to have to be hauled off. So um, he will be procuring a car trailer here pretty quick. Um, it's time for him to buy his own car trailer. And he's going to start hauling it down, I think. 
I think. That's the plan. Now, it's quite possible that he'll just, you know, fritter and putter and, and, you know, make phone calls and, you know, do a little of this and a little of that and finally just abandon the whole mess. I don't know what he's going to do. I really hope he puts his mind to it and he, and he starts, you know, selling off the, the metal and doing, doing the stuff he's got to do to clean the place up and get his junk out of there. I, I personally, I don't see how he's going to be able to. I don't, no one is going to want a burned out fifth wheel. No, by burned out, I mean there was a fire in it. No one is going to want a non-running, class A, ancient motorhome. Um, most of the rest of the stuff can be hauled out fairly easily on a trailer. I don't know how he's going to get that 40-foot container out of there. I mean, they got it in by hook or by crook. I don't know about getting it out because there's a lot of hairpin turns on a dirt road. Not easy to remove a piece of equipment like this. I got a chance. Sorry, you're going to look at the inside of my hand for just a second while I give my arm a rest. Okay, so anyhow... If into the foreseeable future, he is going to be dragging junk off of that property. So, um, uh, uh, my son had a great idea. He says, you know, Mom, he says, you know what you should do? He said, you, you should tell Grant he can do anything he wants with the junk. If he wants, wants to drag it back to the house, let him. He said, and then you move to Marshall Station. You move into the apartment. And nothing can pass the perimeter of your, of your property that you don't want. He says that'll be easy. You guys can meet up, you know, go on date nights, but he can live there and you can live here. And I thought, you know, that's actually not such a bad idea because I love my junk and I hate everybody else's. He loves his junk and he ignores everybody else's. So we'll see what happens with the junk. I'm sure you guys are going to be quite interested in watching what happens to our horde, at least those of you who care. So anyhow, that's what's going on. I am going to put this phone down because my arm is beginning to cramp and I'm going to get back to work. Talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.